10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Nick, don't leave. Thank you, Jesus. Nick, just play the piano. Halle the keyboard. Hallelujah. The keyboard, Nick. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, what a good God he is. You know, as I was meditating upon the word this afternoon, the Lord just spoke to me and said, I like to give pleasure to my children. I just like to give pleasure. I like to manifest myself. I like to show off. God is a God that likes to show off. He wants to bless you. He wants to bring pleasure to you. He wants to just touch you, fill you up. And how does he do that? He looks at your heart. Those that are hungry, those that are hungry, God will just come so strong and manifest himself to you. The, the Bible talks about in Psalm uh, 16, verse 11, this is a prophetic psalm from Jesus. It's, thou will show me thy path of life, and in thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Now, it's amazing. I look that up in the living, and it says, you have let me experience the joy of life and the exquisite pleasures of your own eternal presence. Wow. Is that a mouthful? You have let me experience that wonderful presence. Now, you can tell me very plainly tonight, those of you that are here, when the presence of the Lord has come upon you, what happens? Joy comes. Peace comes. The wonderful pleasure of his presence. Uh, Psalm 21, 6. You have, oh, I like this. You have endowed him with eternal happiness. You have given him the unquenchable joy of your presence. The unquenchable joy. That joy full of glory and unspeakable. Because you can't describe it with your mouth. You know, when, when God comes and visits you and touches your life. Wait, you guys turn these off for me. When he comes and touches your life, you, it's hard to explain eternal things, isn't it? I, I know times when he's come and he's filled me up. I just, and then somebody asks, well, how did you feel? What happened? It's like, you, you just can't explain it in your mere English words. Because there's so much glory, so much presence. When Pastor Greg so eloquently this morning was preaching... And he was preaching from Psalm 24, one of my favorite. And I thought about so many people have a gate that is closed. And if they would only open up that gate and let the King of Glory come in. It's closed because maybe you're worried about what somebody might think about you if you have a Holy Ghost time. Or are, are you worried where, what will happen to you? See, to get God, you got to lose yourself. And if you lose yourself, you're going to get God. Keep self, no God. But you get self. Yeah. The Bible says we have to deny ourselves, And we have to seek his face. And if we seek his face, the Bible says that we will find him. Psalm 26, 8 says, Lord, I love your home, the shrine where the brilliant, dazzling splendor of your presence lives. The brilliant, dazzling splendor of your presence lives in me. Oh, when I get to that place of glory, when I get to that place of worship and adoration unto the Most High God, He comes and He brings His brilliant, dazzling splendor into this earthly temple. And this earthly temple becomes a holy temple of worship unto the Most High God. He doesn't live in temples of brick and mortar. He lives in this temple. And he's hungry. The Bible says in Psalm 24, This is the generation that seek him 
that seek thy face. Lift up ye heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. And who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty in battle. Lift up ye heads, O ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. And who is this King of glory? The Lord mighty in battle. The living would say, the Lord of hosts of the armies of heaven. He will come in. If I will seek him with everything within me, if I will cry out to him. Hannah, when she was so distressed, so perturbed about not birthing a children, Paniah had so many, Alkanizah the wife. I can't imagine what it would be like for Pastor Hap to have two wives. It would be sort of hard, wouldn't it? There has to be competition between the two. You know, his other wife is his business, but I don't mind. It's all right with me. But she was so distressed, and she cried out to God, and she said something that I like so much. She said, remember me. Sometimes we see everybody that has sought the face of God that has been touched, that has gotten a prophetic word, that the glory has touched them. And then here we are sitting in the congregation and nothing happening to us. We're just looking around and wondering, oh God, why not me? And she said, remember me. When I get dry, when I get weary, when I feel like his presence has waned, when the cares of the world come and they mount upon me, and I feel like I'm being pushed to the floor, I say, oh, Lord, remember me. Won't you come again? Won't you come one more time, Lord? I'm so hungry for you. Won't you come again? And oh, as I turn from myself and I get to that place, maybe not on bended knees, but maybe pacing the floor and crying out to the living God. And he comes and he remembers me. And the amazing thing about it all, he says, daughter, I was there all the time. You're the one that has turned away. You're the one that has ran the other way. So if I could just remember that he's always there and he wants to give me the exquisite pleasures of his presence. That his joy wants to fill me up and wants to touch me no matter what season of life I'm in, no matter what I'm going through, or no matter what somebody has done to me or not done. I can lift my hands and I can experience the pleasures of his presence. For God is a God that wants to bless you. He's just looking for you to come to him, to open that gate, to lift up your head and give him glory. Like Hannah, she had to get to the place where she had to cry out to God. And the prophet Eli says, oh, you're drunk. She says, oh, no, Lord, I'm not drunk. She said, I'm just pouring out my soul before God. And the Bible says that God answered her prayer. But she made a vow. And she said, Lord, I will give that son to you. I'll give him to you. I can't even imagine how she even did it to have no children, to birth a son. And once he's weaned, take him to the house of the Lord and give him as an offering unto God. And to leave their childless again. How could she do that? God the Father offered his son. He had to turn away. He couldn't look. And he had to turn his back and offered him for us. But just like Hannah, she had five more. God blessed her and blessed her. My soul praises God. Because of the sacrifice of God the Father, what he did allowed his son. Many sons and daughters are in the kingdom, and he wants to give you pleasure. 
pleasure, endowed with pleasure, endowed with the presence. Like I said, God loves to show off. He loves to bless you. He loves to touch you. He's more hungry for you than you are for him. And if you will just open your heart and surrender every part of you to the Most High God, he will bless you. He will touch you. He will fill you with the very presence of the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Luke that it's a father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 4, I don't know exactly where, but we were created for his pleasure. We are his pleasure. If you have children, if you have children, I get pleasure just looking at them. No matter how old they are, I love to watch Pastor Greg. And he gives me pleasure when I watch him. Just think, when God the Father, he says he looks down from heaven on the sons of men. He's always looking down at you. He's always there. You can't hide from him. You might feel like he's hiding from you, but you can't hide from him. He says, I look down at the sons of men to see if any are doing right. I look for the one that I can bless. I look for the one that has sought my face. Because he says in his word over and over again, if you seek him, you will find him. If. There's always a stipulation. If you seek him with your whole heart. It's not my life I live, but the life that I now live. I live by the faith of God. He died for me. He rose from the dead for me. It's not my life. It's his life that I live. And it's his glory and it's his praise and it's his honor that I exalt every day. So tonight, I'd like you to run with this word that he is everything that you will ever need. When you're alone and you're tired and you're weary, and you feel like there's no hope, you cry out to the living God, and he'll fill you up. He's always there. He says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He sticks closer. Our God. And when I hear that scripture, my dear mother has a brother that's about two years younger than her. They are like this. They're always on the phone, and I think I'm sticking closer like that as a brother to my God. Thank you, Jesus. One more scripture, and we'll close. Psalm 65, 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causes to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts, and he shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even thy holy temple. Satisfaction is dwelling in the courts of the Lord in his house. One thing I have desired, and that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord. Do you want to do that? to inquire in his temple. And then it goes on to say, you said, seek my face. So I said, Lord, your face I will seek. Let's stand. Your face, Lord, I will seek. I just pray that the face of God will shine upon you, that it will shine big upon you, that the very presence and glory of God would permeate every fiber of your being. And that you would know that you have a hope of calling. That you would know the riches of the glory of the inheritance of the saints. And the exceeding greatness of his power. For you who believe. For you. That you may know that power. That Christ would fill you. Overflowing. That this would be a week of glory. 
that he would prosper everything you put your hands to. That not one word that you speak from the very Son of God would fall to the ground, but every word that you speak and you confess will come to pass in your life. For he is the resurrection and the power and the glory. Dear Pastor Greg. Amen. Are you guys ready for this week? If you're here tonight and you have any special prayer requests, you need healing in your body, fresh commitment to Jesus, or just any prayer requests that you need, the ministry team will be up here and uh, we'll continue to minister uh, for those here tonight. And uh, we just want to bless you. It's an incredible, amazing day and an amazing night that we've had. And we just know God has great things in store for you. We love you guys so much. We'll worship with this song. And if you have anything that you need prayer for, just step out of your seats. Make your way to this altar.